Amen. Good morning. Very good to see you. Welcome. If you were here last Sunday, you may remember that Naomi, our youth and children's pastor, invited us all to be listening to God. And she asked us to ask God a question. God, which game could I play with you? Do you remember that? What did, what did some of you get? I oh, obviously stuck deeply in your minds and hearts. That's really good. That's fantastic. Well, I had someone had hide and seek. I remember that. Some of the kids had Monopoly, which is a dreadful game. Chess. Okay, I had God said to me, let's go for a walk. She said, okay, that's fine. And then Naomi said, could you turn to the people around you and ask what they got? So I turned to somebody behind me, and God had said to her, apparently, to go and play Patience, which, of course, is a one-player game, which, if I'd heard that, that would have been God saying, go on your own. You know, you go and play. I don't, I don't want to play with you. Anyway, she was quite encouraged. I, it must have meant something to her. We got an email at church a couple of weeks ago just to, to the office and a lady had been here on three Sundays ago and she said that during the service that we'd shared one of the words of knowledge that we thought we often share things that we think God said to us and the word that Sunday was something about someone who was suffering with lots of ulcers in their mouth, simple thing, and that the Lord wanted to heal them and she said oh, it was, it was, she was just visiting but she said that was her and so she went to the back and asked one of the prayer teams to pray for her. And they said that a, I think she described it as a lovely and sensitive lady, which I thought she'd got the wrong prayer team, but apparently it was ours. <laughs> lovely and sensitive woman prayed with her. And she said that um, it was, by the time she got home, drove home, it was so much better. And then she emailed on the Monday morning, simply saying, wow, they've all gone is completely cleared up. Thank you so much. God bless you. And it was really lovely to, to get that. So let's keep praying. There was a word this morning from somebody. John, you had a word that somebody, if you're suffering today, particularly with a problem with your kidneys, something you've been diagnosed with, we'd love to pray for the Lord to heal you there. As Kaz says, we're in our series about prayer at the moment. So we've got two or three more weeks left. And the theme of this morning is open your mouth and I will fill it. Open your mouth and I will fill it. So if you've got a Bible, now's a good time to open it or turn it on on your phone. And we're going to be reading a passage from the book of Acts. If you've never read the Bible before, it's your first time in church. This is an interesting place to start, but it's where we are today. We're in Acts chapter 10. We're going to read just three verses and we're jumping inevitably right in the middle of a story. There's set the scene that Peter, the apostle Peter, has been sent by God to the house of some people who believe in God, but they're not Jews, they're Gentiles, particularly a Roman officer in his household. And Peter is talking to them about Jesus. And then partway through, this happens. Verse 44 of chapter 10 of the book of Acts. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, for they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Amen. Lord, I pray as we look at this for a few minutes, would you speak to us, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, show us, show us what you want to say to us. Holy Spirit, rest on us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Underneath this cool and suave exterior that I exude is a nerd desperately trying to stay hidden. I am in particular a nerd when it comes to history. I love history. I read history. I watch history programs. I listen to lots and lots of history podcasts. We're going on a holiday this week. And my holiday reading is this book about the history of the Lollards, which is a 14th century English radical religious movement. I'll lend it to you when I'm done because I know you'll want to read that one. I love it. Fascinating. My head is full of dates and all sorts of strange historical things. You can come and test me on stuff later on. My favourite podcast that I listen to, I listen to every week, a couple of times a week, is called The Rest is History. Anyone else listen to that one? It is the number three or number four most popular podcast in this country. And it's presented by two historians, Dominic Sandbrook and this man, Tom Holland. Tom's a very interesting man. 
and has been on a very interesting journey. He's not a Christian yet, although he's got a lot closer to it, but he writes a lot and studies a lot about Christianity and the influence of the Christian faith, particularly on the Western world. And if you want to look him up and read or listen to some of the things that he said, it's, it is fascinating. And you're reading his book at the moment, aren't you, Kess? In the toilet. It's your toilet book, isn't it? That's right. So he's reading it in very small... Very, no, you be just what you said this week. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Bless you. Yeah. <clears throat> Very good. Reading it in very small chunks. But it's long, isn't it? It's about 600 pages. Yeah, it's good. All right, it's fine. Yeah. I'll stop with the toy. Oh, there was, there was a whole load of jokes coming. I'm going to stop there. Stop there. A couple of months ago, he was invited as one of the speakers to be interviewed at the Holy Trinity Brompton, which is a large church in London, at their leadership conference they do every year. If you want to watch the interview, it's available online on their leadership conference website. And he was being interviewed by Nicky Gumbel, who's involved with the church there, and being asked some questions. And the interview finished up with Nicky asking Tom Holland the question, if you would have any advice on the basis of all the study you've done, any advice to Christians in this country, in the UK, or the church in this country, what would you say? And this is how he answered the question. He said, everything that made Christianity distinctive and potent, he's talking back in earlier centuries, particularly in the second and third century, in the early years of the church, everything that made Christianity distinctive and potent, education, founding hospitals, healthcare, poor relief, and that improved the world for the better very profoundly, that's been taken from the churches. It's been nationalized. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but that's just true. So it's difficult for churches to speak with a voice that doesn't simply merge into the background noise. Because just saying we should care for the poor or whatever, I mean, everybody's saying that. So I think the risk for churches is that you just get absorbed. Carried on. The only way to really hold out against that is to emphasize what makes Christianity distinctive which is that you believe all kinds of mad stuff about God and incarnation and angels. I mean, all of it. The crowd, if you listen to the video, start to cheer at this point. In the face of secularism, there is a tendency in the UK for church leaders to play down the weird stuff about God and rising from the dead and everything and just repeat the platitudes that everyone else believes in. But what's the point? So... Be out and proud about the weird stuff. The crowd were going, yes. And I agree with him wholeheartedly. And so today, and particularly if you're visiting today and you're on holiday, you thought, oh, we'll pop along to church, nice bit of church. Today is top weirdness. We are going full weirdness today because our theme, as we think about prayer, is about speaking or praying in tongues. Speaking or praying in tongues. And for many Christians, it's something that they've heard about, but really would wish, wish that it would go away. Have any of you ever been driving along in your car and you've heard a noise from inside the car that shouldn't be there? Have you ever had that experience? And you just wish the noise would go away. You may even have prayed, if you're a Christian, that it goes away. I remember years ago, our family, we were driving in a small yellow Peugeot 205 to France and we were driving down to La Rochelle in France and there was a noise, it was a clicking noise. It was going tick, 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 tick as I went along. And I just wanted the noise to go away. And so you know what I did? I wound the window up so I couldn't hear it. <laughs> and, and, there, and then I thought, I'll just wait, you know, it will fix itself, whatever it is. 15 minutes later, because it was hot, I wound the window down, tick, 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 still going. I just wanted it to go away because I knew that it meant, oh, I'm going to have to go to a garage and I've got to do it in another country as well. And I'm going to be facing the cost lots of money, blah, blah, blah. Just wanted it to go away. But it doesn't. And why doesn't the issue of speaking or praying in tongues go away? for us as Christians or in the church? Why does it not just go away? Because it's a bit weird, it's a bit odd, and perhaps it would be better if we could just put it in a corner somewhere and forget about it. The reason I think it doesn't go away is because I think God has placed it quite prominently in the story that we see in the New Testament and in the life of the church. 
So I wouldn't quite say it's placed front and centre, but I do believe it's significant. It's significant, especially in the book of Acts, from which the story we've just read is in. Open your mouth and I will fill it. Dave, my clicker's stopped working. Is there any chance of fixing that? Thank you. Open your mouth and I will fill it. So praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, and the word tongues, when we hear tongues, we think it's that. It's not. It just, it's just the old English word for languages. It's just speaking in another language. That's what it is, supernaturally speaking in another language. It's mentioned six times in the New Testament, once in the book of Mark, and that little bit at the end of Mark that we're not quite sure whether it should be there or not. And then three times, there's three stories in the book of Acts, and then it turns up twice in two passages in the book of 1 Corinthians, later on explaining a bit more about it. And two of the times it appears are at the most significant, almost the most significant moments in the history of what God is doing in the New Testament and the history of what he's doing in humanity. One is the story that we read today, and the earlier one, those of you know, where is it? It's the day of Pentecost, right at the beginning of the book of Acts. That key moment that we call the birth of the church, where Jesus had told his disciples, stay in the city until power comes from on high, from heaven. And the, the, the disciples are gathering and they're praying, about 120 of them, and suddenly the Holy Spirit comes. There's a wind, there's fire, and they start speaking supernaturally in languages that they haven't learned. And a crowd gathers and there's people in town from all over that part of the world because it's the the festival, the Pentecost festival, and they can hear these people praising God in languages that they haven't learned, that they don't know. And then here again in our story that we've just read in Acts chapter 10 is another key moment because what happens here, the Holy Spirit is poured out on people who are not Jews, not part of that chosen people. They're Gentiles. And it says that Peter and his fellow Jewish believers, they're amazed the Holy Spirit's poured out upon Gentiles. This is the moment specifically where God says, this isn't just for Israel, this is for the world, for everybody who believes in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is poured out. And one of the signs that the Holy Spirit has been poured out is they start praising God in languages they don't know. I don't know what languages they did know. They probably knew Latin because Cornelius was in the Roman army and Aramaic, which was the language they spoke in that area. Maybe some of them spoke Greek or something else. But suddenly they're praising God in other languages. Like, what did we speak 2,000 years ago? Sort of Celtic. I don't know what you lot were speaking up there, up, up north. I don't know. Celtic or something or Chinese or whatever other languages. They're starting praising God in these languages. Something's going on. Something's happening supernaturally inspired by God to speak in a language that they have not learned. And I said to God before I was speaking this message, I said, Lord, I don't just want to talk about it. We need to do it. So I said to God, I said, God, can I pray and give a message in tongues today? So I'm going to do that right now. And the New Testament says, says in the book of 1 Corinthians that, that if it's done in this way, that somebody should interpret it. And at the end of the little talk today, we're going to ask if someone's got an interpretation for that message. I'm just going to pray and uh, a message in tongues. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Now, I told you it was top weirdness today. So you've come today, you're on holiday, you've popped into church and there's some bloke waffling all out front. Okay, but we believe that's a gift from God and that what we're doing is that when I get to the end of this talk, I'll say, has someone got the interpretation for that? And we're going to ask the Lord what that is. The slight irony today is that for the first time ever, we are trialing a translation app. It's just a coincidence that we're doing that today. <laughs> and there's about five or six people in the room who've got the app open on their phone because we want to be able to use it in the future for people who don't speak English and come to services. So I, I'm speaking that. And I, I want to know what your app, the app, later on made of what I just said. That's going to be brilliant. That's just a coincidence. Fantastic. And um, clicker's gone again, Dave. If you could help us out. Thanks, brother. So our passage... All right, thank you, brother. That's brilliant. Cheers, Stu. Peter's together preaching. 
And obviously the Holy Spirit had decided that Peter had been talking enough and wanted him to stop. And so interrupted. And quite a lot of you, I appreciate, are quite regularly in that position, like going, Amen, Holy Spirit, come, stop him now, stop her now, whatever they say. And Peter's preaching about Jesus to these Gentile people who do believe in God, and God's called him to speak to them, and he's sharing about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit turns up and falls on the people there in Cornelius and his servants and his household and other soldiers and falls on them. Something has happened. And one of the signs that that's happened is that the, the Gentile believers start to speak in other languages supernaturally. They're praising God and speaking in other languages languages so one of the signs it's not the only one by any means but one of the signs that the holy spirit has come and that we are filled with the holy spirit is that we can start to speak and praise god in other languages thank you very much what are speaking in tongues or praying in other languages it's simply the miraculous ability to speak in a language that is not your own to speak in a language that you haven't learned i was in france a couple of weeks ago i can speak some french although i can only say things are happening now i can't do future or past tense so people will say they'll say what are you doing tomorrow in french and i'll say i've no idea i can tell you what i'm doing right now because i can only do present tense i can't do future or past very well i had these conversations and it was all very immediate now this is what's happening now it's all i could do so I can speak a bit of French. And many of you here will speak more than languages. Some of you speak a number. Some of you grew up speaking another language. Most of you speak English. You'll speak something else. And that's great. But this is supernatural ability to speak in a language that you haven't learned, that God has given you in a moment or throughout your life. Sorry, Dave. Next slide, please. I was listening to a pastor from a church in East London a few years ago, and he was telling a story about a trip that he and quite a lot of members of his church had done to visit Israel and parts of, of that part of the world, but particularly to go and visit some of the places where Jesus went and things mentioned in the Bible. So they'd gone there and visited. And so they were from a church in East London, and the, the majority of the, the people in the group were, were black or the Londoners, but some of them had been born elsewhere. So they did speak some other languages apart from English, a couple of Nigerian languages and so on. The, the guy, the pastor, was originally from Nigeria. So there was, you know, there was probably three or four or five languages in that group. But they travelled to the Middle East, and they'd gone one morning early to visit Mount Sinai, and they'd gone to the top of the mountain. And they had a tour guide with them, and he was a, a young, educated Jewish guy, Hebrew speaker from Israel, who was used to taking groups, particularly groups of slightly zealous, over-enthusiastic Christians who wanted to go and visit all these places. So he was used to that. So that they got to the mountain, and they walked up to the top, and were there as the sun came up. That's what lots of people do at Mount Sinai. And then they gathered. They think, right, we're going to pray, and we're going to praise God. So they were on top of the mountain, praising God. They're from a Pentecostal church, so quite an enthusiastic style of singing and praising God. And some of them were singing or praying out in tongues as well as in English or another language that they knew and just praying out in tongues on top of this mountain. And the, the tour guide, he was familiar with Christians stopping and praying. So he was nearby, wasn't taking part, just sitting there and could hear them singing and praying. And they did this for quite a while and then they finally finished and it was time to go down and find the coach. And the pastor was saying that as they walked down the mountain, the tour guide, this young man, came over to the pastor and said, did you know what you were saying when you were praying? He said, I heard you praying in English, but I, he spoke English, but I, I also heard you praying in other languages. And the pastor was saying, yeah, we, were, we call it praying in tongues. It's something we, we believe in. He said, do any of your groups speak Hebrew? He said, no. No, we speak English and two or three other languages, but, but no, no Hebrew. And he said, a couple of your people were praying out loud and they were talking about God and praising God in an extraordinary way in an elegant, ancient, academic form of Hebrew that he knew some of because of he'd been at university and studied it. And he said, but, he, but they've never learned that. And the pastor said, no, we, we, this is a gift that God has given us. Needless to say, they had a rather good conversation about God on the coach, on the way to the next place. 
God supernaturally giving people language. The guys praying were just Christians from London who were just praying in tongues like they would normally at a prayer meeting, not knowing that they were speaking in this language that they'd never learned that someone else could. Open your mouth and I will fill it. So what is it, this praying in tongues, this speaking in tongues thing? What is it? Well, it's languages given by God that help us to pray and to praise and on occasions can be used to communicate with others. And my experience and the experience of most Christians and the way that we seem to understand what the New Testament is saying is that there's two, two ways that the gift of praying or speaking in tongues works. The first is that for any Christian who wants that gift, that it becomes part of our own prayer life, our prayer life with God, that we're praying and we're praising and we're singing. It's just part of our prayer life. Sometimes we'll pray in our own language, English or whatever your language is, and then sometimes pray in tongues as well. Some of you would have read the story or have heard Jackie Pollinger telling a story. Jackie Pollinger is a British lady who in her um, sort of 40 or 50 years ago went to Hong Kong in China and began to went as an enthusiastic young Christian there to seek to serve God and to share the gospel there. And so she arrived there and went to a place called the Walled City, which is it's not there anymore, it's been knocked down, but was the, the roughest, most difficult part of Hong Kong City. And she was there seeking to go and share Jesus with people and pray for them. She didn't speak Chinese or was just starting to learn. And most of the people there didn't in the Walled City didn't speak English, or at least not, 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 not very good English. And so it was really struggling. She was going every day and she'd visit and she'd try and talk to people and could try and pray for people. A lot of people there were using heroin and were addicts. That was a part of that, that part of the city and was very frustrated and disappointed with what, that, that nothing seemed to be happening. And a local couple who pastored a small church there were meeting with her and said, well, could we pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and also to start speaking and using the gift of tongues? And she said, yeah, great. And so they prayed for her and she had an experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit and began to pray in this new language. And so she said to herself, I'm just going to take a quarter of an hour every day as part of my prayer time, not just I'm praying in English, but I'm going to take a quarter of an hour just to pray in tongues as well. And so she did that and would pray in tongues every day just as part of her prayer life. And she said over the weeks to come, extraordinary things began to happen as she visited the walled city. People were being healed. People were coming to Jesus, even though their language barrier still was difficult. But as she said, as I began to pray in this new way, it was as if the Holy Spirit was released in a new way in my life and a ministry, and it was extraordinary. And she's continued that practice and still does so today. Spending time every day praying in tongues. Debbie, who's coming to speak at our weekend away in October, was Jackie Pullinger's assistant for 10 years in Hong Kong and has just been back out to visit her there. So you can ask Debbie about it when she comes. So that's the first way. It's our own prayer language, our own worship language that we can use as part of, of how we communicate with God. But then also at times it's a gift, and it talks about this in 1 Corinthians, it's a gift that where somebody would share it publicly, as I did a few minutes ago, and share the gift publicly, maybe in a gathering, a house group, or in a meeting like this. And someone else's job is to interpret that supernaturally. This is what I believe God is saying through that tongue that's come. So in a few couple of minutes, I'll be saying, who do they feel as they may have the interpretation for what I shared earlier on? Those are the two ways. And there's some instructions around that, particularly in 1 Corinthians 14. So... Is this gift, the gift of praying or speaking in tongues, available to anyone who's a Christian? Now, there's discussion about this and chat about it. I've been chatting with a couple of people about this this week because they knew it was coming up. My feeling with this, and in fact, all the gifts that God wants to give and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we read them last week in our passage, gifts of the Holy Spirit, they're available to every Christian. Any one of us who comes and says, God, fill me with your spirit, those gifts are are available, including the gift of praying or speaking in tongues. And my encouragement to you is that if you don't have this gift and you'd like it or any of the other ones, is go look for it. 
Go and ask. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy, it says. So let's do some eagerly desiring and saying, yes, please, God, let's do it. One thing to say. The gift of praying in tongues is entirely under your control or mine. So I can choose to say something in French, bonjour, je m'appelle Mathieu, j'habite à Siren Sister. We always have to ask instructions where the swimming pool is, don't we, in, in language class, où est la piscine? All right, yeah, right. straight ahead, turn second on the left, all right, that's fine. Turn there, gauche. And so I can do that in French, that was under my control. I can also say, hello, my name's Matt Frost, I live in Siren Sister, where's the swimming pool? I can do that in English as well, and you can do all that in the languages that you speak. But also, when I pray in tongues, it's under my control in exactly the same way. I'm going to pray in tongues now. I'm going to pray in English now. I'm going to pray in French now. Has anyone seen the film Independence Day? It's nearly 30 years old now. It's not brilliant. But um, aliens turn up, take over the world. They always land in Washington because that's where they always land. There's nowhere else aliens can go. And... There's one point where they've captured an alien and the alien grabs hold of a scientist, a dead scientist, and uh, you can't see it very well there, but that's what's going on in this picture, and wraps its tentacle around this dead scientist's throat and manipulates his voice box so that the alien can communicate with the President of the United States, of course, happens to be there because they always turn up. And he's there, and, you go, ah, ah, and you hear this speaking. And some people think that that's how it works with praying in tongues. That God will come to you and say, grab your fire, and force you to say, no. It works like speaking English or Afrikaans or Portuguese or whatever your language is. It works in the same way. That's how it is. It's under your control. So how do we get this gift if we want it? How do we start praying in tongues if we haven't already? Well, Firstly, we need to ask, ask God to be filled with the Spirit. And that's the prayer we can pray again and again and again. Go on being filled with the Spirit, it says in Ephesians. Let's keep being filled. We need to ask. Check out this passage here. We come back to this many times at this church. This is Jesus speaking, Luke chapter 11. Would any of you fathers give your stone if he asked for bread? No. That <laughs> was a very enthusiastic response there. Or would you give him a snake if he asked for a fish? No. Or if he asked for an egg, would you give him a small animal with a sting of poison? No. no. That's the New Living Translation of Scorpion. I don't know why they've, they've gone to all that trouble, but there we are. You are sinful and you know how to give good things to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Amen? That's it. We know how to give good gifts to our children or our friends. We know how to do that. How much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So we need to ask. And then open your mouth and I will fill it. When I was first prayed for, I'd been a Christian two or three months, I was prayed for by three of my friends who'd been Christians very slightly longer than me, and they said, we'd like to pray for you to be filled with the Spirit. And I said, great, because I was keen, I was enthusiastic, Lord, I want more of you, pray for that. And I knew that part of the expectation was that in praying that, I would also be able to pray in tongues as well, that was, that was going to come along with it. So I sat in a chair and the three of them stood around me and they prayed for me and nothing particularly happened. I didn't have blinding flash or any particular experience. I sat there and they prayed. That was nice. They were praying, Lord, fill Matt with your Holy Spirit, baptize him in your Holy Spirit, fill him now. And I knew at the end of that, the expectation was that I'd be able to pray in tongues. So I thought, well, I'll look a bit silly if I don't. I appreciate many of you think you'll look silly if you do. It depends on the context. But in this context, I think I'll look silly if I don't. Thought, right, I better start. I better have a go. Let's have a go. Come on, Lord. And I just started to speak in a language that wasn't mine. And of course, I thought it was me making it up and I'm an idiot and this is just nonsense. And I'm effectively, this is scat singing and jazz without the music. This is what it is. Doobie dooby doo, all that. But then I carried on. And I've been doing it for 30 odd years, just as part of my prayer life. I was driving back from Western Supermare on Monday, and you always need some prayer after having been to visit Western Supermare. And I was just driving up the M5, and I thought I could listen to 
another podcast. And I thought, no, I'm going to pray for a while and just drove up the M5, just praying away in tongues. And it's carried on like that ever since. But it started with me just saying, all right, let's have a go. Let's just start. Start speaking. And off we went. So I'm not going to tell God how he wants to work with you or with somebody else. But my suggestion is simply ask God to be filled with his spirit. We should be asking that regularly. And ask for the gift of tongues. And then just start speaking. You may need to turn your logical brain off for a minute that wants to analyse it and work it out and just say, I'm just going to have a go. Off we go. See what God does. So in a minute, I'm going to pray for all of us here. And then straight after this service, in the Coxwell room, if you would like, I'm going to be in there with a few members of our prayer team. We're simply going to play some nice Christian music and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and rest on us and simply gently come around and pray for anyone who wants prayer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to start praying in tongues, we we'll pray for that and for anything else, that you, any gifts you want from God, we're going to do that. So that as soon as this service finished, about five or ten minutes afterwards, just come and join us in the Cotswold Room and we're going to pray just for that. But before I pray for all of us now here and at home, who has an interpretation for that message that I gave earlier on. Just give me a wave and I'll give you the microphone, Pete. Oh, and uh, in fact, Pete, you can come up here. That's fine. So just share what you felt the Lord was giving you as, as I shared that earlier on. Yeah, because I wanted to say it's interpretation, it's not translation. And I just felt that you were saying, <clears throat> Lord, I will praise you in the morning. I will praise you in the evening when the sun rises, when the sun goes down, because you are the God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. That was good. Thank you. That was brilliant. I could testify as well. Oh, go on then. Quick Quickly. testify. Quick testify. <clears throat> when I was prayed to receive the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues, nothing happened. I went home. And I stood in front of the bathroom mirror, and just like Matt, I thought, I'll have a go. And I started speaking in tongues, something that I'd heard other people do, but I didn't, hadn't done it myself. And I know that at that point, I said, right, I'm going to stop that. And I stopped it. And just like Matt said, it is a choice that we make. And it took a while from that point before I felt confident enough and free enough to be able to speak in tongues. Thank you, Pete. No, that's really helpful. It's very good. Because you started speaking in tongues and thought, this is weird. I'm going to stop that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm English and we don't do these things. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Excellent. Right, let's pray. Let's pray. We're going to just ask that the...